Welcome to Vassals of King's Grave, so the, the home of geek culture, Game of Thrones, A Song of Ice and Fire discussion, and many, many TV shows that we discussed. So today we're talking about the very popular British Dorset-based drama Broadchurch. The, so the final series and three episodes to, to go, so we decided to do a mid-season discussion to discuss all the suspects in the case this time. My name is Glenn and I am Dagos Rivers from the podcast Face and Fire Forums and I am joined by Jock, Mundo Jock 2 on the forums. Alex. Uh, hi. I Wendy on the forums. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Uh, hi, it's Mary and I'm Mary on the forums. Hi everyone, this is Nadia. So this, well I guess we can start with, um, so of course series one and two did you watch series one and two as it happened, or did you catch up later on with the show? Um, I think I, I I watched season one uh, after af after it came out, and I probably followed up on season two and watched it as it happened, and season three season three um, definitely when it happens. So right now. <laughs> For I season had... one, my parents had the DVD, and so that's how I got introduced to it. And I think I saw season two on DVD too. I didn't watch it as it happened. And now I'm watching season three live. <laughs> <laughs> Did your parents have that on DVD? <laughs> uh, season two. Season two. Uh, I don't. I'm not sure. I don't remember when I saw it. If it was um, on TV or on DVD. I had heard of it and knew it was really popular and had some of the, I think, um, like eight, maybe um, seven or eight million viewers each week in Britain. But um, I only got around to it maybe last year and I watched season one and two within about two weeks and then have been watching ever since. So series three, each episode, watch that every Monday at 9 p.m. Yeah, I think I watched it. I watched season one like right after it came out, but then I totally forgot about it. And then I watched season three. So, sorry, season two. I'm sorry about the background noise. It's okay. It's, I, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I watched season. Yeah, I I watched season two like right before season three started. So very recently. And how did you hear about it, Nadia? Um, the forums, I think. Somebody mentioned it like, oh, there's this great but really sad show. And then I started watching it. It was so sad. That's right. The forums, we introduced people to a lot of great shows. And uh, th this one's, I guess, memorable for for the ending to the show because it was so unexpected that they had set up so many suspects in series one. And then it was just completely... Yes. Left field to the actual the reveal was. of season one was crazy. Like I, I don't know about you guys, but it was definitely I did not see it coming at all. Well, I never see anything coming. So. <laughs> yeah, me neither. <laughs> but like sometimes you like you think maybe it could be this guy or maybe it's the other guy, and you're not sure, and then it turns out being like the le the least likely, but someone you, you at least suspected. Yeah. But in that case, it was just yeah, crazy. Yeah, it was, it, it was really a, a huge surprise. And really, and but at the same time, it wasn't like, um, I mean, we didn't expect it. And we didn't either uh, expect it because, oh, we never talked about this guy. So it's probably him. It's, it was just really well. because well, he didn't look suspicious at all. Yeah. He was just it was, a it nice was just guy. really well done. <laughs> <laughs> and his wife was in charge of the investigation. Like, she, yeah. <laughs> she wasn't going to suspect her husband of anything. Oh, and I was watching season one again a few weeks ago, and I watched um, episode seven, and she was talking to Susan Wright and saying, how could you grow up, well, how could you have your husband under your roof and not know that he was raping your daughters? And then <laughs> I thought, oh, that's something I never picked up the first time. Yeah. Yeah, but there's there's actually a few a few things like that I think that actually um, are kind of foreshadowing of what's going to be revealed. But it's definitely how can you how can you think it's going to be him? But I think it's slightly different because Susan's. Uh, 
Susan's husband was doing it like in their house, right? But Joe yes. was doing it somewhere else. So it's not yeah. it's not exactly the same situation, but similar at the same time. You you're right. It is similar, but I guess because Joe went away to meet Danny in well away from the house and and things like that, and then kept it well hidden. Yeah. And like nobody had any idea that they were meeting in the first place, so no one was suspicious of him. Well, so I guess except from except for Tom, yeah, you know, who knew, but yeah, <laughs> nobody. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but nobody asks the thirteen-year-olds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. for those that haven't watched so far or are still waiting for it to come out in your country, the. Uh, the premise for this one is there is a a rape of an, a 49 year old woman and Ellie Miller and Alec Hardy are in charge of the investigation and the Trish Winterman who was raped, this was done at her friend's 50th birthday party which leads to numerous suspects because the, the party had over 50 men in attendance and then you see at the end of one of the episodes, a huge board of possible <laughs> suspects yeah. and it's like 50, 60 names on the boards. So far we've met about 10, 10 of them and um, I guess some of the ones that I remember just now is Clive Lucas who's a taxi driver who was taking people from and to the party and also picked up a mysterious stranger as well at the party and then there's her best friend's husband, who she had sex with on the day of the party. But we only find that out in like episode four. The most, oh yeah, that's right, <laughs> episode yeah. four. But before we, we did find that out, I seen a lot of theories on Reddit that it was Joe Miller that she, <laughs> she slept with. And then I seen theories that she was sleep, sleeping with Tom Miller or someone oh, underage. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And that's why she didn't want to say to the police because that would get her in trouble. At first I thought it might have been her ex-husband and yeah. like she didn't want to admit that they were seeing each other again or something. I was torn between her husband and Calf's husband. Yeah, it does yeah, I guess it makes sense. make the most sense. Yeah. Well, now we know that it was indeed him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But actually, the, like the Tom Miller thing, it's so... It's really awful that people would think that, but the whole um, the whole scene where where they're watching uh, some porn on his phone, and I don't know, it seemed really like a big thing, and you you're gonna want to see that, and so I've wondered if that was not maybe a video of the rape or of something linked to the to to the rape. I don't know, but oh, I, I didn't mean, think it was that. just like. I didn't just took it as a oh look they got punished and they're doing it again like it it seemed like it it was something uh, that had a meaning uh, on the video but maybe maybe I'm just oh god uh, I hope not oh uh, yeah it would I be think awful so, but... I think the stories are linked together that there's a reason yeah why... for sure because the his friend is the stepson of the taxi That's driver right. who's yeah. really shady yeah. <laughs> The... They're all shady. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like the 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 ex husband is is just shady as hell. Yeah. Um, the taxi driver. The, the guy I from the know. factory to um, the young yeah. guy. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. And <laughs> well, I guess I guess they they cast him well, right? Because the the guy is just. just like, you, yeah. You just want to hit him in the head. <laughs> Because yeah. <laughs> he's just so annoying and so full of himself. I think, well, I have a theory about that, but maybe we'll get to theories later. Well, when Trish in the latest episode goes through that flashback of trying to relive the, yeah. the night of the party and she sees a, a bright light, a lot of people think that that's a phone recording it and oh. that, that might have turned up on some porn site that's managed yeah. by the the young guy that owns the twine business oh right oh right because yeah, that he makes sense i does things my, with computers yeah. or my maybe first... it's um a sex tape of trish and jim because apparently like 
Trish's husband hacked her computer in some way. I'm guessing it was to hack her webcam, and he's trying to get the computer back to like wipe all traces. So maybe um, Trish and Jim got filmed, and that was what's getting out. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Uh, oh my god, this is all so creepy. <laughs> yeah, it's also think. awful. Because every, every idea we can have about this is awful. But uh, when they mentioned the bright lights, my first thought was definitely a, a, a phone. And actually, I'm not sure if it's um, um, Hardy or... Um, Oh, uh, Miller, uh, who mentions it, but they have the idea yeah, too. they do mention it. By the way, we still don't know who owns the house just next to that. Yeah, um, that's also um, kind of shady. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jock, do you have any theories yourself or any people that you would point out as the culprit? Well, every season I say the vicar did it, so the vicar did it. The vicar is looking really suspicious this this season. Yeah, he is. Like, in first season, he was a recovering alcoholic, so maybe it could be him that was the vodka there. It's also very weird around Trish. That's right, because they say that, that each of the, the free rapes, the guy has had spirits in yeah. his... Um, smells of spirits. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I was going to mention that too. So the, we learned that there was a, there is a second person that was raped, and she confided in Beth's supervisor. So do yeah. we think that that's someone we know? She's actually the third one, right? We've already seen. Oh, yeah. the third, the third person. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure, but that's this episode, the fifth one, has been has definitely been the most impactful um, in a couple of places. Um, when the second victim comes out, she she's like, I didn't tell anyone because I had been drinking. I was wearing, I don't know, she gave a description of her dress and whatnot. And she said, you know, I knew I was the one who was going to get blamed for this, which is why I didn't tell anyone. And then after Trish confesses uh, having slept with her best friend's husband, she was like, what? out of everyone, out of all the women at the party, why would this man choose to rape you? Like, and those were like the two moments which were so, I don't know, it's like something you can really relate to because every time somebody gets raped, that's like the most, two most common questions. Oh, what was she wearing? Why was she the one that he got, you know, basically you're trying to pin the blame on the woman. Like, why was she the one who got raped? And that's just, I don't know, I, mm. it was very... Oh. Yeah, and I, I I guess it's a very real thing that uh, policemen are not always um, reacting like like uh, they are here, and that uh, they actually blame the woman and be like, and what were you wearing? As if it was uh, a relevant question, which it it shouldn't be, and yeah. that's 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 what Broadchurch uh, does best. I mean, even in season one and two. Uh, it was all about the 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 yeah the the crime and 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 Danny's death and everything, but it was also really about um, grief and and how you overcome it and how you how you work on that. And I think it's I mean it's the main point of uh, season three as well is how um, how you come back from such a traumatic event and how it's perceived and and how everything is wrong about the way we keep, um, I say, we as a, uh, in general, in, in, in society, uh, blame, we keep blaming women on uh, for these kind of things. Yeah, and I think it's really powerful that this season we have Beth, uh, who overcame the death of her son and all her trauma, and she's now helping other women deal with not exactly the same issues, but the same kind of trauma. And she's, like, I I like the contrast bet between Beth and Mark this season because Beth is trying to, like, support her community and, like, go on with her life and try to find new ways to help others while Mark is still bent up on Joe Miller and finding Joe Miller. And that's also a whole bag of shitty things about to happen. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, you can understand both points of view. Like, you can understand Mar why Mark is going after Joe Miller because, you know, it was his son. Yeah. And, and he'd made mistakes that he wants to rectify. Yeah. And, and the guy yeah. 
was clearly guilty and got acquitted. So I I really understand why. Yeah, but then you can also understand for why. But then you can also understand why Beth and Chloe just want to move on with their lives. Definitely. Like they've, they've handled their grief and now they want to move Definitely. forward. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's really brilliant how they connected Beth to all of this and and uh, what she's done with with her grief and everything. It was a really, uh, really brilliant way to bring them in season three because uh, it's nice. I mean, we we've we've met them we've met them in season one, and we we want to know what what what's happening to them now, and uh, the connection to this season's uh, intrigue is really. Uh, really well thought of. Yeah, definitely. I agree. It's uh, so the Latimers are a big part of the story, so I'm glad they are back, mm. sort of in in the background. And um, I, I'm also interested in what will happen with Joe Miller because I thought he wouldn't show up at all <laughs> this series. <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad that he's he's back, and well, hopefully nothing too bad happens with him. Yeah, I don't. Well, I, I hope something bad happens to him. I just hope Mark is not the one doing it. Yeah, I'm. I really, I'm really afraid for Mark right now because I don't know what he's expecting. Like, what does he think is going to accomplish? Like, finding Joe Miller. Like, is he gonna try to kill him? Is he gonna punch him in the face and just leave? Or like, what is the end goal here? And how does it not get him into trouble? You know, people still believe that it wasn't Joe Miller that killed Danny, and it was maybe to, uh, maybe Tom or someone else. Really, like in in real life or in the show? Oh, it's in in people speculating on the show. Okay. And I, I'm sort of well. I'm. I think that the producer or the main writer has said it's definitely Joe, but if he didn't. <laughs> say that then I would think the the perfect fit to the the story and how to connect the three seasons would be if Joe wasn't guilty and it was actually he was just covering for Tom. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. (laughs) (laughs) Well that'd be uh, that'd be interesting but mm. but anyway (laughs) as you said the main it does fit with the um, ending to Grace Point as well. Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen Grace Point. Is it good? Is it like I exactly the same the, story or did it's it It's the exact it? same, well, it's the same story with minor changes to it. Okay. Yeah. They're doing a, I haven't they done a French one as well? Oh, I think I don't that's know. right. Yes. <laughs> I, I don't know what the name is it of, of it is, but I think they are doing... A French I, I, version. I don't, like I don't get, I don't get the point of that. But <laughs> I mean, no, it's just like, why would you just redo a show basically exactly oh, the same? Oh right, the one in in Corsica, right? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I've just, I, I Malat- just know that Malatera. they're doing. One. Say again. Malatera. All ah, right, I think that's it. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't get it. I, I guess there are, there are a lot of shows that they've done like that. So the when Queer as Folk started in America, that was just like a direct copy of the UK episodes for the first half of the season one, and then they started to branch out and do their own thing. Well, I, I guess if they if then they start their whole thing uh, and and it's it's it, it gets somewhere different, I can I can understand, but. Well, I don't know. <laughs> it's just like there's already one really good show like that, and just try to. Uh, I mean, people should should do new stuff instead of redoing. Yeah, um, and I I don't really see the point of redoing the same show with David Tennant yeah. in Grace Point. <laughs> like we already have that yeah, show I mean, with this makes... actor. <laughs> yeah, I, it you makes sense money, if you're okay. doing it in a different language. I mean, yeah. it makes sense if you're doing it in a different language because at least you know you want if you want the characters to be speaking that language and don't want to have subtitles. But it's the yeah. same language, and you're even taking like some of the same actors. It it really does make sense. <laughs> yeah, but since I haven't seen Grace Point, does David Tennant still have his accent in it, or does he do an American accent? 
or something. He does an American accent. <laughs> oh, oh right. <laughs> so the Americans are too <laughs> dumb to understand the Scottish accent, so they redo it <laughs> with an American accent. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So I've only that... watched one episode of it, but I know that they have a, so Broadchurch was eight episodes, but I think Grace Point was 10 episodes. So they did add okay. a lot, I guess, a lot more smaller details into the show. I still don't see the sense in it, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> so with the, I guess, the rape of Trish and a lot of I guess there's been a lot of focus on, oh, who were the men at the party and things like that. <laughs> uh, one of the big theories is that it was actually a woman. So Calf raped Trish. I've, I've seen a lot on, on Reddit and digital spy forums. Yeah, but that doesn't make any sense because, well, the I think at least that the three rapes were done by the same person because they're the exact same. It's, they're described the same uh, way. Yeah, the yeah, same yeah. Uh, ammo uh, yeah <laughs> that was so what do you think the yeah, and I think one of the other women says that she also had a had an old sock stuffed into her mouth which is very specific yes yeah. and and then and they then show you guys the with socks the yeah. same socks yeah <laughs> yeah that was like and the and the uh, fishing equipment guy is one of them right he's one of the players yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, I don't. I, I wouldn't really buy the the theory that that it could be a woman. A, a woman. I mean, uh, at least not Kath, because indeed I don't. I don't really see how uh, that would be connected to the the two other rapes. And and I don't know. I don't. I don't like the idea of the show. Like, it can mislead us, but not not really like lie to us. And the way we see. Kath reacting to um, to the news of the rape and to the news that um, Trish had sex with her husband and everything. I think it's really it, it's real, you know. And I, I I don't I don't I don't know how that would fit in with the idea yeah, of her raping Trish. Plus, she has she's pretty much the only one who has a strong alibi because everyone saw her at the party for the whole time. Like she didn't leave the party at any at any time. Oh, I was just going to say just how horrible of Calf to just walk in the room and accuse her husband of raping Trish. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like and and okay, so what's asking gonna bring her, you know, because if he says no, she's just gonna be thinking, Well, you're lying to me and he's exactly. gonna he's not gonna say yes. So Yeah. Yeah, so exactly. Like, even if you ask, you're not I mean, if he did if if it if if you did do it, uh, you, you you're never gonna get a straight answer about that. So it's just yeah. Yeah, I mean they just have a bad marriage. It's yeah, that's that's yeah. an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so I, I I wanted to ask, what do you guys think about like the owner of the house? That there's is... something definitely up with him. Yes. I don't know. Yeah. I get yeah. the feeling that there's something going on. I'm not saying he did it, but but I'm saying yeah, they want us at least to think what's going up, uh, what, what's going uh, up with that guy. I mean, yeah, he's. I think he kind of plays the the clueless old man who is like, oh dear, this is terrible. We're not going to rent yeah. the house again. He, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think he knows more than he's letting on. Maybe not that he did it, but he could be, like, he could be in cahoots with whoever did it. Yeah. And whoever owns the house next door, too. I, I did like that part, though, because it, it reminded me of series one when Becca Fisher and her boss were talking about the hotel, and the hotel was empty, completely empty, because no one wanted to visit Broadchurch because of the murder. So mm. just um, like part of the aftermath of that happening, that the rape at the party. So that's bad for business for that house, for organizing functions. Yeah. But I don't know. He doesn't look like he needs really the, the money from the business. It's just <laughs> He just owns this huge house and 
he, I guess he just figured why not let people use it, but I don't think he, his income relies only on renting out the house. I find it weird that this sock has just turned up now, though. Yeah, and the and the yeah. way the way he shows it to the police is really shady. Like he's like, so my dog found this. It, I think it has nothing to do with the case, but he seems to think it's important. So let's just trust my dog on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But so many so many of the sub uh, suspects that we see were not actually at the party at all. Um, the convicted rapist that turns up. He is such a... He's so um, creepy. Such a horrible... Oh, he's so I really, really, really creepy. Yeah, in the I, first scene, in the very first scene we see him, I almost felt sad for him. Like, you know, maybe he didn't do this and, um, you know, his wife seems to trust him and whatnot. But then you actually talk to him and he is such a creepy guy. <laughs> yeah, creepy pervert. <laughs> yeah. That makes me sad, though, that the... That they can just turn up at his house and just on the basis of the fact that he was commit- convicted of rape before, <laughs> despite having nothing to do with party or anything, is enough for them to question him. Yeah, yeah that's, um, that's a good point because it, it, I mean, if he's out on parole and everything, it's just so it, it makes sense that some people are still, are still uh, uh, making sure he's not doing. Uh, anything wrong again but like that you can just arrest him without any real evidence whatsoever is really they they only arrest him after finding out that his alibi is is false right they question him the first time and they're like okay he didn't do it and they go back and then they they start having doubts and they question him again and he gives them a false alibi and then yeah. they're then they arrest him. Yeah. Plus he I think he the reason they go to harasses a police they... officer. Like he gets in the car with the with the girl and Yeah <laughs> and tries to bad. sexually harass her. Like it is I feel he's so like he's he's so bad at hiding his his rapist tendencies that if he was the one who had done it they'd have already found all the evidence to arrest him (laughs) i think the reason that they went to question him in the first place was because sexual predators are usually repeat offenders so there's i don't know of all the crime shows i see you know they always have like a list of sexual predators in the area uh, you know, pedophiles and rapists and whatnot, because there's a chance, there's always a chance that they could do this again. So yeah. I think it's just like standard procedure to go and question somebody like that again. Yeah, and in a sense, it's a it's a little bit little bit of an echo to uh, the old guy in season one that everyone suspected. Uh, I was thinking that he, too. Yeah, he, that he killed Danny and he, and that it was a child molester and everything, when in fact the case he was actually uh, accused of uh, had nothing to do with that. And yeah. I don't know. I, in, I this don't know case, yeah. in this case, I think it does, because the, the, um, the case in which he was convicted was, I think, very similar to this one. Like he had tied her up and then gagged her and something like that. Yeah, yeah, like definitely. Definitely. Yeah. It's it's definitely not the same situation where in season one he was wrongfully accused and was actually a nice old guy trying to live his life. Uh, it's, it's just not the same at all, but it just made me think of it. And it was yeah, actually I never uh, thought, real sad. And I never thought I would feel sad for Walter Frey, but... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what about Trisha's ex-husband? What do you guys think of him? It's really, like... I mean, he's clearly panicking when the police uh, comes, and and I, I I can't really believe. I mean, maybe it's not connected at all to 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 the rape and everything, but like, and maybe he's just afraid that the police will find out something he doesn't want them to find out, so he tries to get to get rid of it right now. But it's just, um, I mean, it's it's yeah, it's shady that he would like break into a house and everything. Um, to, to get rid of, of something on the computer uh, and and it wouldn't be connected. I, yeah, I don't know. And yeah, and the way he calls their daughter and everything and be like, hey, could you give me your mother's laptop and everything? It's just not right. 
Yeah. I'm surprised she wouldn't tell her mother about that. Yeah. Even though he says don't tell your mum, but usually you would just tell her anyway. Well, that's almost even more of a, of a reason to tell her. But I mean, because it's it's weird. But and at the same time, I think she like she has a, a great reaction. Like, there's not all a uh, 15 or 16 year olds would be. No, it's mom mom's computer. I'm not going to give it to you. Uh, she's. I I I really love the way she's reacting to the whole thing and being there for her mom and everything. Yeah, I think the 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 ex husband he's he's up to something, but I think what he's panicking about probably isn't as as big a crime as a rape. Like maybe he was spying on on Trish or doing something to a computer, but I think he's really panicked about that, and that means he didn't do it, the rape. Yeah, I, did, I see your point. Trish did receive two text messages, and we find out one of them was from the geography teacher. That's yes, Sarah. Sarah, Sarah that's yeah. um, with her ex-husband at the moment. Yeah. But yeah. do we think both of the texts were from the same person, was or was it two? What was the what second was one? Yeah. I think one was like, shut up, shut up, shut up. Yeah. And the other one was, I know you, um, I can't remember now. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't don't remember, remember the, the other text. Text. Yeah. But that, there's the flowers as well, right? Or did, did that yes. got uh, explained? No, that no, the right, flowers yeah, were something else. Yeah. And are we supposed to uh, suspect the um, uh, her boss, the the guy who owns the the shop? Yes. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> and yeah, do, yeah. do you guys? I mean, do you do you fall for that or? I don't because no. I don't know because he 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 seems really nice and like he has her back, but then he well he has violent tendencies. Like he gets Obviously. mad at at Jim and he just goes and beats him up. Yeah. So I wouldn't put I him past has, him. I think he has more stalker vibes than rapist vibes. Honestly, <laughs> like he's totally that's in love much better. with Trish. <laughs> I mean, I think that's why he goes after Jim because he Jim got to sleep with Trish when he didn't. Like I think yeah, he's yeah, in love yeah. with her. Yeah. So the, the evidence against. Ed would be that he was the last person to see Trish as she left the party and then I guess we know that Katie is his daughter and I'm thinking that will that will be revealed next week because of the general press charges against Ed for beating him up and mm. then it'll come out that that's his daughter. Yeah yeah and she she warned him and everything I mean she didn't warn him but she told him uh, like in episode one, we see her calling him and 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 mentioning the police and everything, uh, and and I and mean, that he indeed, was on that list. Yeah, and if indeed uh, he did it, it would give him warning to to I don't know prepare an alibi or something, uh, but and like it would be it would be a, a plot thing that the that the daughter daughter actually. Uh, warned him about the the police coming, but uh, I don't really buy it. Uh, I think actually I'm not sure we even met the guy who actually did it. Yeah, my theory right now, which is probably completely uh, crackpot, is that uh, it's Leo's father, the guy who owns the fishing supplies factory. Because but, we haven't yeah. met him, and he's well, he has access to the supplies that um, the same supplies that Leo has access to, obviously, because they run the same factory, and he's he hasn't even been questioned because he like his son just said, well, he's not around. He just lets me run things, and so they never pushed in that direction. So he's, I think he's hiding out somewhere, just waiting for them to arrest someone else, I guess. Well, Alex, a lot of people think that, well, I've, I've read it anyway <laughs> on a few forums, that 
the the one that's that owns the house is Leo's father. Oh, <laughs> that would be yeah. <laughs> that, that, that would be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> See, I didn't even think that far. <laughs> But Leo but, does have some shady things going on. Well, yeah, he does ask his girlfriend to lie for him about where they were that night. And so. she's completely okay with that. I didn't, yeah. I didn't get that. And she doesn't seem to know what he was up to. Like, she's just like, well, you just yeah, owe me I'm, another <laughs> favor then. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure she's really okay with that. Like, you can see that she she's... Um, when when Ellie mentioned, you know, you could go to prison, right? Yeah, she's. <laughs> I love. I actually love that that line. She was just and so. And the way she says so it with a, with a big smile, like yeah. just a paper saying you could go to prison if you lie to us. <laughs> Have a lovely day. But, but you see that it it does trouble her the idea. I mean, she's afraid because she doesn't seem like she doesn't seem real smart like tell me what to do because i'm afraid she said she said i would go to i could go to prison um but yeah yeah i don't i don't really get i mean it's it's shady why she would lie for him and what indeed he did that night and she says that there's free things that or she yeah he, she's he owed said... free favors so i wonder if it's like she's done free things now to cover up what yeah, he was I doing don't... on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. And then, then, then there's a bit of dialogue. I'm not sure I, I, I understood. Like he's he's asking, what are you doing uh, next Thursday? Or I don't know. And and I'm not sure I quite got what she answered. But it's like um, nothing yet. Or I don't know. But it's gonna uh, I don't know. It's not gonna be free. Or it's gonna cost you. Or I I didn't. Um, or maybe I just oh, no, I think got he that just, all wrong. I just think he was um, offering to take her to dinner as right, a favor, okay. and she says it better be expensive. Yeah, okay. Like yeah. an expensive restaurant to that's, pay her back for her for lying, lying to the police. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's what you do, right? You you <laughs> you, you bring her jewels and and uh, and Fancy invite restaurant. her a restaurant, and everything is fine, right? That's the Who way do we to think go. That, um, well, if Clive was telling the truth anyway, so Clive picks up someone that's in his 30s at the party and he pays £40 to go, I can't remember where, but who do we think that mystery person could be? Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I really don't know. I'm thinking it fits the description for Mark Latimer. <gasps> so wait, what, what's your theory that Mark <laughs> Latimer did it? Possibly. <laughs> well, but like Mark was uh, getting in touch with someone to get Joe Miller's address. Could it have been someone that he was visiting for that and not for the raid? <laughs> oh, but yeah, then no. he, I guess he finds out where Joe, Joe is halfway through the series mm -hmm. and not at the beginning. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, but it could have been someone that he went to see and they didn't oh, have yeah. it, and it could be. then he because the guy that I... he meets uh, at a at a cafe, he's he hasn't met him before. He's never seen him before and yeah, the guy but just like... says, Hi, we talked on the phone, here's the documents. But why would you go meet someone at like one in the morning? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's. I mean, maybe he was like getting a gun or something to, in his grand scheme to murder Joe Miller. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and obviously, as shady as it is, like there probably could be other reasons for for someone to 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 be picked up by by Clive uh, at that moment, and it's shady, but it doesn't necessarily have to. It has to be the. Uh, the rapist, you know. Yeah. If it was Mark, maybe he was going to commit suicide because he seems to be on the edge recently. Yeah, but he didn't. Well, he seems <laughs> he seems to be fine when we see him at the beginning of the season. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but he he obviously isn't because he's not he's not with Beth anymore, and that's because he couldn't uh, stop bringing up 
Danny and 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 seeking revenge and everything. So, I mean, we we get the explanations and uh, and and we see that he's really not okay after that. But it was probably not uh, in his best uh, uh, best of best of times uh, at the beginning of the season either. Hmm. But I don't know. Would it like I? It would really, it would really not be satisfying if it if it was Mark, because like we've got attached to that family and 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 what they went through, and like Beth and Chloe's examples are that you can actually overcome your grief and and make something good out of it, and and that it's not necessarily a circle of violence, and I would find it a little bit, I don't know, too easy that because Mark had such a terrible thing happen to him, he became a rapist. I mean, it's like people don't necessarily become rapists because something bad happened to them, you know? Yeah. I w- I'm not sure I would like that message. No, I wouldn't like it either, definitely. But yeah. I feel like it, it could be a possibility because like keeping in the same the same vein of a suspect that we know and don't suspect at all. Like, Mark Latimer is around and he's doing shady things, but I don't I don't really like that idea. Do you think <laughs> yeah. that he'll have a change of heart about Joe? So he might have gone there to beat him up or kill him, but just maybe he'll learn yeah, to I forgive don't him. Yeah, I don't know. Well, not forgive really him, know. but, you know, <laughs> put it in the past. Yeah, because with the point I was making just now that, yeah, it's not necessarily because you, you've you been subject to such a traumatic event that you become violent. So obviously if he does uh, beat up Joe or I don't know, or kill him, uh, it would it would kind of be saying that. Um, so I don't know what I think is gonna happen, but, but at least I think uh, for the rape part of the show, that that it would definitely not be a good message to see to to say like he's been uh, yeah he's been through something and in a sense it would explain that it, it be, he became a rapist I mean and and then again uh, what's the link with the two other rapes uh, which happened way earlier than that I mean just it would kind of give him uh, give the rapist. Uh, an explanation for doing that and we shouldn't try to find one I mean n- raping someone shouldn't should never be uh, like explained and by by something uh, that happened before like oh yeah yeah I I, I raped her I, I, I raped her but uh, I'm really traumatized because my son died shouldn't be a thing you can say right yeah yeah I agree I think the link between the three years that Kaf is involved with it, not that she did the rape, but just um, like she got one of her friends to do it or something or set it up because those women slept with her husband and it was some sort of revenge plot. But that doesn't make sense because Kath couldn't have known about Jim and Trish before the party. Well. She, she doesn't suspect, seem to, but but yeah, she why not? suspected, you know, someone was with her on the day of the pub. Was with yeah, Jim I think on but the day yeah. of the pub. But she I think didn't she made think it was like Kat, a specific. It was Trish. Didn't she make like a specific comment, which I don't remember? But she said something about Trish and Jim specifically. Like, of course, he was giving her attention or something like that. I I don't remember exactly what. Yeah, before before but we learn, I, I think she might have like suspected, but not known because it happened like that very day. Yeah, well, I definitely, I definitely see how things would would connect kind of neatly if indeed all the women were were women uh, Jim slept with, and that Kath was getting her revenge. I don't know how it works with white with what we're seeing uh, just now but uh, I agree Nadia that I think she she yeah I remember that comment that well uh, Jim was 
paying attention, was talking with Trish at the party. Yeah, obviously he was because he's always paying attention to her or something like that. Before, uh, I mean, I remember her saying that before we see her uh, learning about Trish and Jim, yeah, and yeah, Jim yeah. sorry. So maybe, maybe she's behind it in some way. And I think that it, it seems weird to pick up on how many men were at the party. So I think that's maybe part of her plan as well, that she had so many people come so that it would distract from the actual rapist that was involved. Oh, although I, I did read that <laughs> there were some, uh, especially on Reddit about this, that it was a swingers party, but I guess the, that's not happening <laughs> with the story. We haven't talked about Daisy yet, and do you think that it was Tom Miller that stole her phone and sent out the, the picture of her? It could be. I think be. Tom was sharing video. I think Tom was sure sharing like porn videos. So I don't know if it's him or somebody else, but if it's him, then oh, this, I'd be so bad. Yeah. I know. <laughs> you know, specifically because Alec and Ellie have become like actual friends. Yeah, and it's so and nice, their really, relationship. I, exactly. It's like the best thing on the show. So and that can cause a kid. rift between the two as well. Yeah. But I, def I, d I definitely think that's going somewhere. Like, you know, Tom's story is definitely going somewhere. I just don't know what direction they're taking it in. Yeah, and and it, it, it would definitely make sense that Daisy's story is also linked to it. Although I like I like the idea that we're just, I mean, that we're also just following uh, these characters' lives and, and learning about stuff that don't necessarily have uh, anything to do with with the main uh, with the main thing. It's like like with uh, I, I don't remember her name, but the newspaper lady and the newspaper being Maggie. Yeah, and the paper being shut down and everything. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't see what that has to do with anything, but it's in a sense it's nice that we get a little bit of info on people we knew from previous seasons. So like it it. It would be neat that everything is connected, including the Daisy, uh, Daisy's photo and, and Tom and everything. But that at the same time, I think it, it bring more reality to the show that not everything has to be related. Yeah, and they could be related, but really vaguely. Like, because um, there's, there's a relationship between the taxi driver and his stepson and who's Tom's friend, but like the Clive Lucas doesn't really know about the whole porn thing. He's so like they both they're both doing shady things at the same time and they're linked to each other, but the yeah, their that, actions aren't really linked. Yeah, that could that could be it. Like just just that just that there's a connection between the people yeah. and not necessarily with the events. Oh, I thought that Clive knew about it, but he I just didn't I don't know tell if his... he if he knows. I mean, yeah, I guess because the mom doesn't know, but the kid was suspended from school, so yeah, he probably knows. Yeah, I think one of the parents would have to be told, right? Yeah, I mean, and Tom's also, mother got called in, so one thing I was wondering is, does the kid know that uh, Clive isn't his dad? Because they don't really seem to bring it up with him. He, I think he mentions him being his stepdad somewhere. Okay. Like he says yeah. my stepdad yeah. is being extra extra awful these days or something. Okay. Yeah, I think so too. Okay. Yeah, he mentions it in episode three because he says my stepdad's being a dick. Then later on, you hear from Clive and he mentions. Oh no, you hear from Clive's wife and he she mentions the backstory of having a child. It wasn't his, but he gave up his dreams of being a doctor so that's where I put the two, two and two together that the that that would be Michael's stepdad oh really because I didn't I didn't make the connection until we saw them literally in the same room together <laughs> yeah 
Hey, that's that's funny. I'm actually on the Wikipedia page of uh, season three. Yes. And like they, they're presenting different characters and about uh, so Michael, the the stepson uh, and, and Tom's friend. Uh, it's actually written. He, he is acquainted with Daisy Hardy. So I guess there is indeed we, we, we do oh, no. see. I mean, maybe well, like maybe he's one of the guys that show up. Uh, yes. In one of the first episodes, and yeah, when yeah, those are the three boys. boys. Yeah, yeah. That come to see Alec Hardy, and he's one of those three. Okay, okay, so that's that's why it's written there. Okay. <laughs> so maybe he's the one who leaked your picture. Yeah, maybe. Oh yes. Um, who do you think um owns the house next door? Do you think we know him already? Hmm. Just assume so it was, because she saw the light and there's a security light on that building. So yeah, that's that's a possibility. Um, I mean that the light, the bright light, would be the security light from from the building. Um, I guess we're we're bound to find out, right? Because they brought it up, so we're gonna have some yeah. answer about it. <laughs> I'm I'm hoping they don't just never mention it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I love I love uh, how Chloe is going to see Daisy and be like it, it yeah, seems like you you so would need sweet. a friend, and like even in season one and two I actually really liked her character because she's obviously uh, going through difficult stuff with Danny's death, but she's like. She doesn't go bad or anything. She's a teenager, not having a um, an easy time, but she's a good girl. And yeah, I really liked her her reaction to 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 that and, and be like, maybe I can help you. And that was really nice, yeah. really touching. Oh yeah, I never thought on that. So it's sort of like mirroring the relationship between Beth and Trish, and then there's Daisy and. Chloe, because she's yeah. the yeah. being supporter type roles. Yeah. And also great because the, well, they're sort of linked because Danny was, well, Tom, yeah, Tom's friend was Danny, and then Chloe's friend would be Daisy. I don't know because they, yeah, but they definitely didn't know each other be, before that, so. That's right, I mean, yes. At the time, so. But yeah, it's. It, I mean, it's one of those things with uh, Broadchurch, right? That it's a it's a really small town, and and so you get to see all the little connections between the different characters that may or may, may not have anything to do with the uh, with with the rape itself. But uh, it's really it's really interesting to to see all the little things that the showrunner bring bring up. Well, speaking of connections, that was something I was thinking on the last episode. So after the the thing about they introduced Michael and he talks about his stepdad, then you later find out that's Clive, the taxi driver. So I'm sort of thinking if there's that they're sort of leading to other connections on the show. So that the new woman that shows up that says that she was raped two years ago, she mentions a new husband. So I'm sort of thinking, who could that be? Mm. Is it relevant? Oh, Maybe yeah. not. That the guy that the rapist went out drinking with and played football with, I yeah. think his name was Dave Fisher, or the, the, he he names the guy anyway. So I'm thinking, who's that? Is that someone under a different name that we we already know? Mm. Mm. So I'm wondering if maybe that has some some sort of part of the jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. Well, we will find out. Oh yes, Soon. yes. Three more episodes to go. <laughs> I'm actually really sad about this because that's all. That's also the last three episodes ever. We're gonna get a pro church, and it's really one of those shows that. Yeah. I mean, I probably got into it because of David Tennant, whom I absolutely adore. But like, the show is really one of those shows that uh, really had a huge impact on me this last few years so I'm gonna be sad to see it go. So many of my friends and and family when I've mentioned the show to them like oh are you watching Broadchurch or 
have you tried watching Broadchurch? They always say like the number one reason why they don't want to watch it is because David Tennant is in it. I'm, I'm not <laughs> sure why. <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> oh no, that, that would be like my number one reason to start a show actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. David Tennant is great. I'm a huge fan. I love him. Yeah. yeah, and this show is just so beautiful. Like every shot is just so well done and there's you feel like it's the sunniest place in the world even though it's in England and <laughs> <laughs> and everything and there's just this this peacefulness in every in every shot yeah I agree it feels like I, I don't know it feels kind of soothing even though there's these horrible crimes going on all the time but so is it it's a beautiful have, show to watch. It is. Visually. <laughs> yeah, that's part of the the appeal to it. The fact that it's just set in this small community, this peaceful, you don't even need to lock the doors when you, when you go to sleep at night. But then this murder happens that upsets the whole peacefulness of the town. And yeah. then later you find out about all of these rapes happening as well. So on, on the one hand, I'm sad that it's ending, but then... I'm happy because we're getting closer to the reveal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and it's it's always gonna be one of those shows that you really love. And I mean, I'm 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 gonna rewatch it for sure. Like I've even even though uh, I've had the reveal, uh, I'm I'm gonna watch it again and still enjoy it because because it is really good and. Like one of my friends uh, earlier today w was telling me uh, funny how uh, these, uh, I mean, he was saying that kind of ironically, but uh, funny how the, these uh, little shows, I mean, the one that are actually kind of short, uh, it, they have a tendency to be real good. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> true. Like, it's definitely oh, not yeah. the same thing that one of these big uh, network shows that go on for uh entire scene, I mean, decades. Uh, so, I mean, in a sense, that's that's a good thing. I mean, if, if the guy uh, has finished telling his story, it's like, okay, well, that's your decision. But at least, um, at least everything is consistent yeah. and makes sense. And he's going to be doing Doctor yeah. Who next. Yeah. That's he's exciting. Next. Yeah, it is. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's the yeah, next because... uh, Doctor Who showrunner. Yeah. Do you watch Doctor Who, Jock? Um, did. I stopped during the Matt Smith's ones. Oh, right. Mm. Yeah. Well, there are actually... <laughs> <laughs> there are actually two, two uh, actors from Doctor Who in Birdchurch, at least. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> well, yeah, the... Um, Paul Coates, the vicar. Yeah. I love them in Doctor Who as well, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love his character, I think, and I can't, I cannot really believe that he would be the rapist uh, in this season, because, I, no. <laughs> well, I thought he looked really shady in season one when they were trying to figure out who killed Danny, and there's this priest, like, kind of hiding things because he was hiding that he was an alcoholic and he was kind of the shady person and then it turns out he was really just a good person and since then I've never doubted anything he says basically in the show. So, yeah I think we've already we've already discovered like his faults yeah and to make him the rapist would just be sort of you know going back to what we saw in for the first season. Yeah. Well, when when Nigel came back for briefly in one of the episodes, so a lot of people were commenting that sort of in a similar way that he was accused of murdering Danny and he was innocent and so was Paul Coates, but and he was innocent as well, so it was like a similar thing that what if they are actually the serial rapist and they were getting accused for the wrong crime? Please and no. And with the, the Nigel thing, that has got this huge mm -hmm. story arc involved with it. So his father was a rapist and committed suicide. And then he was given up for adoption. 
his mother said something to the reporter about knowing men that could rape her. Oh, and yeah. then, mm. um, oh yeah, and uh, she she says these snide comments to him as well that you have you're the spit of him, your your father yeah. and things. So it would be weird if it came for full circle and it was actually Nigel that was the rapist. Plus he plays football. <laughs> he does. He no. does love playing football. <laughs> I like Nigel. He's so. But they, cool. but they all play think... football. They do. That one yeah. yeah. That's that a long string. By the way, that was actually that was like the worst thing to ever be said in this show, right? Like I know people who can rape yeah. you. That's just so awful and oh, creepy yeah. and oh, oh, yeah. uh. <laughs> That woman was just like, I felt uncomfortable every time she was on the screen. Yeah, she was like messed up. She could not understand. Yeah why her son was not responding to her, you know, to whatever she was expressing. But she was so creepy, like... Yeah. <laughs> was, yeah. yeah she was I mean, I understood frightening. that she had a horrible life and everything, but still, she's, she's messed up. Yeah. And every time we would see Tom Miller go see her and play with the dog and everything, I would be like, oh, I, I don't feel good about this. It's, <laughs> it's, it's not okay. I'm just looking at this list here. It's on the BT website and it's just listing all the possible suspects. Oh, in fact, it's ranked it now. So the number one is, well, it's, it lists nine names <laughs> and 20, 27% has someone else. So someone that we just don't know yet, but nineteen yeah. percent Ian, so the ex-husband. Yeah. Five percent Jim, four percent Ed, seven percent Clive, sixteen percent is Leo, <laughs> and five um, percent is Arthur, so the owner of the house. Ten mm-hmm. percent Tom Miller. <laughs> oh my God! Wow. <laughs> only, only two percent. Two years ago. <laughs> Only 2% is Aaron, the, the ex-rapist, and then 27% yeah. someone else. I'm with the 27% on this. Me too. But, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think the rapist is like the least likely because, because he's kind of such an in-your-face, <laughs> you know, yes. rapist guy. Yeah, he's, plus he was like in prison when the second one. rape occurred, so yeah, couldn't have yeah. done all three. Yeah, and, and I mean, it, it would be like what and, would be like his first, the point of this? His first if, reaction when he hears about that is like, "Oh no, she's too old for me. I would have raped oh, yeah, a younger oh woman." <laughs> oh, just yeah. Actually, what do you think? Not as a suspect or or, or as anything, but of um, of the the young policewoman, uh, Katie. Just as a as a character, what do you think of her? Do you like her? Yeah, I like her. <laughs> I don't know. I kind I, of, I'm kind of like torn because, yeah, because she's she has kind of like this very, you know, uh, her attitude isn't like really nice in the beginning. Yeah. Like she's like, why didn't she report it sooner? Why didn't she do this? Or you know, she's kind of like blaming the victim, which yeah. is like the worst thing in this situation. But at the same time, afterwards, I kind of start liking her. Well, yeah, but I think when she, she also gets, kind yeah. of learns from the case as it goes on like she gets really involved in tracking down all the all the men like she puts all this effort into making this huge list and when also when she gets kind of attacked by the rapist which is horrible i think it also puts things in perspective for her because she like she probably never had an experience like that and that's why at first she was blaming the victim some yeah, fans think yeah. that she's the unknown second person that was attacked by mm. the rapist. Oh, I don't, mm. I don't know. But then, why would she be judging Trish for yeah. not coming, for not oh, yeah, telling them point. sooner? Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> uh, unless it's actually a projection of her own guilt of not uh, saying anything, but I, I don't buy it really. Yeah, yeah I, I think she would. She like if it had been her, she would have reported it. Because, like, yeah. I think from the perspective of someone who wants to be a police officer, she would, like, rationally come to the conclusion that the best thing is to report it. I don't know. Yeah. 
what do you think the the significance is that all three crimes happened around the same time each year, so May or June? Are any of the victims we see only around in that time, like who are away I, for the rest of the year? I don't know. I don't think so. Well, we don't know about the second victim, but um, Trish and the woman who comes to the police, they both have year-long jobs. So, like, they're they're at the same... They've been at the same job for a while. Yeah. So they wouldn't have been away for a long period of time. No, no, I'm talking about, like, any of the suspects, if they're around for that time. Oh. I don't think so for now. Like, of the ones we've seen. Maybe the guy who owns the house. Yeah. we don't really know what he's up to the rest of the time. Yeah. Uh, I've read that something to do with a championship match football game and like visit so a visiting town that but then that would mean we've not actually met the the rapist <laughs> which i guess is a bit of a cheat if we've not actually met the the person that did it yet or oh, that's that's a good point so i would i would say that we've probably seen the rapist from episode one but do you think we've not met him yet hmm I don't know. Maybe, but I think episode six in an eight, eight episode season is like really late to be introducing the actual murderer. Oh, oh sorry, yeah, the is. actual rapist. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> in episode so six, I we're going to find out it was actually a murder and not a rapist. Him. Maybe in like if just a few scenes, but we've prob- probably seen him already. Yeah, it might. It might be someone like that we already know from the other seasons and that we just never connected with the thing. Like with Joe Miller in season one, we'd seen him all season because he was Ellie's husband. We never suspected him in the case. Yeah. Yeah, but I, yeah, I don't know. No one comes to mind. But at the same time, I'm, I'm just, what I about never... Ellie's dad who just oh moved back God. in with her <laughs> and who could have been visiting in the summer months who, other years. Who just, who just lost his oh, wife oh, and everything. Oh, that's awful. No, it would be awful. <laughs> like, poor Ellie, you know? Like, your husband yeah, is a murderer, oh your father is a rapist, it's alright, no, everything's fine. Yeah, nothing is about you. It's oh my terrible. God. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Ellie, I love you. She's amazing. <laughs> She's like the most amazing character. Yeah. And every time, turns every time, out, like, yeah, sorry. T- turns out Chris Shindoham did it. <laughs> oh, I'm just, I found it now. The, the friend that Aaron mentioned is Dave King. But yeah. that's not, I guess... I don't think we know a Dave in the show. Do we know any kings? Hmm. What was the name of the pub that the the first woman was walking home from? Mm. Could it have been like the the owner of that pub? No, because they were drinking in the pub. So no. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Anybody else it could have been? I'm trying to think of other people, but I'm coming up short. Yeah, I, I don't have anyone. I was Hopefully just it thinking. Wasn't Alec. It wasn't who? Yeah. Hopefully it wasn't Alec. Oh my oh, god. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would just be like the worst uh, reveal ever. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Like, I guess he wouldn't care because he's not writing any more series. I, I mean, any more seasons of that. So, so doesn't have to make the viewership happy. But just no, no. <laughs> oh, and I had just forgot, but we didn't mention that. But Alec went on a date. Yay! Oh yeah. <laughs> this was just so, so awkward. Oh my god, so cute. 
That was the sweetest thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and Ellie was like, oh my god, you went on a date. <laughs> <laughs> she just runs into him and she's like, so how was your date? And she's like, what? I, I didn't tell you, did I? I, I, I what? <laughs> He's so cute. Yeah. And then when she asks if the daughter did the swiping as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, oh no, I chose you based on your... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying did to make picture... you look lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picturing him, like, setting to swiping like he does with a case like with that intensity of I like this person I don't like this one it's just it's just such a crazy thing I mean just such a crazy scene imagining Alec Ardy just swiping and <laughs> well I'm, I'm actually shipping uh, Ellie and Alec obviously but that's because I have to to sheep to, to ship two people in any show. It's just <laughs> the way I work. I feel like I feel like I like them more as friends. Yeah, like, I, I love, love I love how they've become friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's great. That, that might actually them, like, I, I, I don't know, I totally agree with you. It just yeah. And I <laughs> probably I thought I thought that in, in like the first season and and it comes from the frustration of never seeing the doctor being with anyone <laughs> and being like no but I, <laughs> so so yeah but definitely there's they're just so cute as friends i love i, I really love their relationship <laughs> i just love how they check in every morning like did you sleep nope did you nope <laughs> <laughs> and ellie Great. was like i want to eat and, and and he's like no we're not taking anything and, and the, the the look on her face is <laughs> do you eat ever <laughs> If I ever get murdered, I want them on my case. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's noted. <laughs> we'll we'll make sure uh, they're on the case, Alex. <laughs> mm. So nothing to do with Broadchurch except for the David Tennant spot. But did you guys see uh, Jessica Jones? Yes. 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 yes I love so him good. in that. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, it was the it was just it, it was really an amazing yeah, amazing show. Uh, hard to I've see been, him as a I've, bad guy though. I've actually been thinking about doing a VOK okay on that. I just yeah. I, I just need time for that. Well, I I'd be oh, have that, I'd be up have for any it. of you seen Secret Smile? Sorry. Have any of you seen Secret Smile? Uh, no. Nope. Oh, it was really good and it's pretty much. Um, David Tennant being the only evil throughout the whole thing. Okay, I'm gonna watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Say no more. David Tennant was enough. <laughs> <laughs> he was actually in Harry Potter, you know. I've only realized that oh, like, yes. quite yes. recently. Yeah. Who was? Well, David was... Tennant. That's right. David Tennant was in Harry Potter? He was, yeah, he was. Barty Crouch was... Jr. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 I knew that. I knew that. <laughs> Mark is in, well, very close to Joe. I'm thinking that they might, for next episode, do some plot where Mark kidnaps Joe and doesn't beat him up, but just has him, like, talks to him for a bit. And maybe that's where he'll have a change of heart. Hmm. Yeah, I'm hoping he's gonna like hear uh, Beth' uh, phone message and be like, I mean, when, when she's back. like, well, yeah, yeah, call her back or just just having a change of heart when when he hears her voice and when she says, uh, I'm worried about you, just call me back. I don't know. But, or. I'm hoping that Paul gets involved as well because he was, yeah, he sort of became yeah, involved with that last season as well. Yeah, and he's he's really in, in search of a purpose, right? Of, of yes, being able to help in any way, which is actually sad. And in the same sense, like when he's asking Beth if he can talk with Trish, 
it's like don't I, I was I was just thinking don't don't try to use her to feel better about your, better about yourself it shouldn't be about that I mean his intentions are to help her of course but it's like he feels bad about himself because he's not helping anyone and because no one is coming to church anymore and just don't use Trish to to have someone to to help you know yeah but yeah I'm hoping that he'll go after Mark or try to intervene in some way because he's he knows Mark is up to something and he I think he's figured out that Mark went looking for Joe yeah and so him and Beth are kind of the only two people who know that and and I, I get I get that Beth doesn't want to intervene. Like she tried and tried and tried, and he doesn't want to listen to her. So yeah. she has to she has to go on with her life and the way she decided to um, to to move on and everything. Yeah. So I get that she wouldn't intervene really, but yeah, it would make sense if if Paul finds him and and that he would uh, get through to him. Yeah. I just want everyone to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the wrong show for you then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, but I really I really don't see what going after Joe Miller is going to bring Mark. Like it can't bring him justice. It it can't make things right. It can't bring him back his son. Like, it's really just an impulse thing that he's, or like, I don't know, an obsession that he has that he hasn't been able to let go of, but it's not going to bring him anything to act on I don't it. think he's, I don't think he's thinking rationally at this point, like. No, but he, it's been like three years, so he, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I. I mean, because I understand, the same like in the in the immediate aftermath, I understand how he would feel that way. But you got to go on with your life at some point. Yeah, but I, yeah, probably, I, it, 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 I mean, he didn't get there right away because, I guess, at some point he needed anger to, to fight off grief and it wasn't right away I don't know but it's always it's always the same things with people um, wanting uh, revenge and uh, I mean doing that because they 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 want to feel better and they want something to to come out of it but it, it's never gonna it's never gonna solve anything um, as for the fact that it was three years ago I think well it, it's also like the three years gap is I guess needed for some other parts of the intrigue and but so obviously if you're gonna um, connect everything and if you want if you want Mark to have this uh, bit of um, story at this point well uh, for the purpose of the show it has to be there's, there's a little inconsist inconsistency in the fact that it's three years after and not just a year or yeah do you think, well, I guess uh, I haven't thought about this until just now, <laughs> but just because it's coming up towards the end and it was always by the creators, it's always been planned out as a free season story that either Ellie or Alec might die by the end. I always thought Alec was going to die because of his heart problems or whatever his disease was last season, but it seems to be doing fine. Now, he got like a pacemaker. Yeah, right? so his problem got yeah. fixed. So. I don't know. I think like, it's not the kind of show that necessarily needs to kill off his main character just to stop. Uh, um, I mean, they could just have him uh, go back to to wherever with Daisy and trying to start again. Um, oh yeah, that's a good point. And I mean, it's not the kind of show where you, where they just kill off characters. Uh, as a big, as a big thing, like yeah, we can kill, we can kill people you love, you know. It's so I don't know. I don't, I don't really think it's gonna end that way. I think we but. should, I think we should just like 
do it right after we watch the final episode and go like oh my god i can't believe he was the one who did it <laughs> yeah yes, yes that, that we should we should do a, yes. a live reaction podcast <laughs> yes yeah yeah uh, i'm i'd be down for that too but i would not say no to another one <laughs> yeah. sorry um i guess nadia you first uh, are you planning any other podcasts or getting involved with any others? Um, just the linear reread right now. Oh yeah. I don't mm-hmm. think I volunteered. Yeah. Jock, what about you? Um, there's two book club ones: the Clive Sinclair one and the Medic and Gods, which are coming up. Oh, are you not doing this quarter? Right. Um, whenever Matthew finishes Color Magic. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, didn't I see you? You were interested in doing the the June one. Um, yeah, I'm on that. Oh, well. oh yeah, quite quite a busy schedule <laughs> that you have then. <laughs> For me? Uh, well, mostly the linear reread uh, as well. I mean, that's how I got started in that. So, uh, yeah, whenever I can get on a, a TV show podcast, I'm on it because uh, I watched way too many of those. Uh, it has to. I mean, I have to, <laughs> it has to, to, to go somewhere, like, <laughs> but, uh, and, and about that, Nadia, if, um, if you're really up for uh, Jessica Jones podcast, I, I could actually uh, edit or host or one of the two, or I don't know, um, it can be a joint, joint work, uh, because I really yeah, love that show. <laughs> yeah, I know, exactly. It's, it's, I, and I think it's actually... <sighs> It actually brings up some of the uh, points that come up in this show as well. Like it's all yeah. it's, a lot of it is about you know consent and you know your right to your own mind basically. Yeah. It's it's, it's very it's very interesting. It's not just a superhero show. There's a, there's a lot more to it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Also, so. this is the the first non linear reread podcast you've done, Marie. Um. So I've done I've done a um, Paul Dark episode uh, oh, on. Paul Dark. Uh, yeah, yeah, I wish I had watched it before you guys recorded it, but I only found out when like you released the episode. And I was like, what oh. is this? And then I watched it. Well, I guess we can maybe have like a VOK about Paul Dark, maybe after yeah, season yeah. three. Or I don't know. Yeah, like sure. I know that Bina wanted to be on it and she couldn't, and there's probably other people interested. But yeah, and apart from that, no, I think mostly the linear reread. Yeah. Did you want to be on the European version of Low One that we never did? Yeah, I wanted. I I, I wanted to. I I actually felt bad about this because we never organized a European uh, cast for for Rogue One, and like, in a sense, I I only made the suggestion like maybe we want to do that, and then everyone assumed there was going to be one, so the Europeans were not on the uh, podcast that was actually recorded, and I don't know. I, I felt like I, it was my fault, but I anyway I couldn't do it uh, when no, they it wasn't recorded your fault. it. <laughs> <laughs> and Alex, did you, you have do it when the anything you're involved well, in? I'm. Uh, I want to do a expanse uh, TV series uh, episode once the season is over which I think it, the final episode is going to air on April 19th, but I won't be free for the last two weekends of April, so it's going to be in May. So, okay, so I have, yeah, I have two <laughs> months. Have I have one a month, month to catch up. To catch it? up, yes. <laughs> cool. Is that the Halle Berry show? Mm, no, it's on yeah. sci-fi, and it's oh, adapted right. from a book series oh, by the right. same name. The books are great. Yeah, they are. <laughs> and I, I also want to podcast about the books, but not a lot of people have read them on the forums. It's mostly just people who've seen the show. I've so we're going to keep it spoiler free. Yeah, and I won't bother them. But the so you haven't seen the show at all? No. It's it's a good adaptation. I think they did a really good job. Oh, okay. Um, I wasn't sure because it was sci-fi and they've had some bad things. No, they, like the acting isn't 
the best acting ever. Like there are some parts where it's kind yeah. of iffy, but the the main cast is great, and the like they've really kept most of the storylines exactly as they are in the books, and I think it, they did a pretty good job. But we'll talk more about this on the Expanse podcast. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Oh, thanks everyone for joining me today on on this discussion. It's been really fun, and um, I'm so excited as well. <laughs> uh, even talking about it just um, gets me hyped up for t- um, well Monday's episode, and then two weeks to go from then, and we'll have the answer we're all looking for. Yeah, thanks, Glenn. That was great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Well, thanks everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.